I've only been roofied once. <laughs> um, it was at a gay bar by a dude who was trying to roofie my guy friend and miss. So that was really good for my self-esteem. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, if you are going to roofie somebody who doesn't even have the right fuck parts for you, that is peak privilege, okay? Milk is $5 a gallon, and you're just out here wasting drugs? We get it, you're rich. Jesus. I think I probably deserved it though, because straight women for decades have been just coming into gay spaces with the you're welcome energy of our parents. <laughs> of our parents. There we go. It's like prom night. Um, with the you're welcome energy. <laughs> of our parents joining Facebook in 2008 and just ruining it forever. Uh, other stuff that makes me cool, Imani mentioned it. Uh, I was the spelling bee girl in my hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania. Woo! Thank you. Um, I represented Erie at the National Spelling Bee and uh, don't worry, I didn't win. I just approached it like a Gen X man approaches a woman's pleasure. Just gave it a shot and got the hell out of there. <laughs> One thing a lot of people don't know about the National Spelling Bee is that when you are eliminated, someone escorts you to the crying room. This is a real place with Kleenex and snacks and crying preteen girls. It's like Chris D'Elia's Disneyland. <laughs> Honestly though, I think it's very healthy. Uh, I think more stuff should have a crying room. Like when I lost my virginity, I was climbing the ladder to his lofted bed in the crack house. There's a sentence right with tragedy. And I stopped halfway up and I turned and I said, what's my last name? He got it right. Reassured that he did in fact respect me. so nice if two minutes later there had been some nice woman to escort me to like a room of couches and crudite to cry instead of having to waddle to cry alone in a frat house bathroom encrusted in fecal matter. It's all very sad. Um, that guy turned out to be a real peach, by the way. Uh, the very next day, I was walking through campus and I ran into my friend Lisa and she approached me and she said, Nancy, I'm so sorry to hear about Tyler. And I was like, oh my God, what happened to Tyler? And she was like, oh, I just meant because he's with Mignon now. <laughs> That's right. He had left me for a statuesque blonde named for the tenderest cut of meat. <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> So I did the only reasonable thing. I climbed on top of my pink 10-speed Schwinn bicycle and I rode across campus wearing only a pea coat shorts and the hair of Medusa herself to demand answers. Woo! You've heard of the pick me girl? I would be, how dare you pick me and not pick me, girl. <laughs> very sad, all very sad. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, about 10 years later, I was helping my mom clean out her filing cabinet and I found a file with this man's full name on the label and inside she had printed off every scrap of information she could find on him on the internet. His LinkedIn profile, his resume somehow, uh, and MapQuest directions to his current address. It had been updated recently. <laughs> not parenting like Glenn Close is loving Michael Douglas, have you even earned your restraining order? <laughs> she, in fairness, had her fair share of experience with creeps. Um, she was, you know, pretty hot in her day, which means that according to the patriarchy, she earned unwanted sexual attention. Um, and so she used to stay up late watching TV after my dad and I had gone to bed, and one night, out of the corner of her eye, she saw something move, and she was like, hmm color me crazy, but I'm pretty sure I just saw a dick in that window. Uh, the very next day, I called the police. They planned a whole stakeout to catch this dick-wielding criminal. What a time to be white. 
Um, and they did catch him. My main memory of the whole thing, I was a little kid at the time, was that my dad had been giving me a really hard time about how my friends and I were spilling our ice cream cones on the front window. Turns out, ice cream, indistinguishable from cum. <laughs> And speaking of jerking off in inappropriate places, I had a dream about Louis C.K. the other night, in which he turned me down for sex. So that really feels good to know that your own subconscious deems you unworthy of a self-professed sexual deviant. <laughs> but in my defense, in the dream, he had planned this amazing party. Great food, great drinks. He even arranged rides for everybody so nobody would drive home drunk. He's wearing these great pants, and I was like, oh my god, this man has such huge follow through. <sighs> Botox, schmotox. You know you are in middle age when you are getting a boner for executive function. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, but because God is a woman and she has a great sense of humor, uh, I am raising two little boys. And the other day, my six-year-old asked me if we were going to have any more children in our family. So I explained, in a very age-appropriate way, that mommy's twat is now exclusively an in-hole. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me with genuine sympathy, and he was like, Oh, is that because your boobs are too old? <laughs> To which I maturely responded, Nuh uh, I still have three years to make Maddie Kelly. My boots are not too old. Uh. <laughs> and then he said, Then why do they look broken? Oh. Yeah. And look, I was pregnant or breastfeeding for five straight years, and then I lost oh. some weight. So at this point, they don't so much sag as they unfurl like fruit by the foot. <laughs> In commenting on the brokenness of the boots he broke, it seems I have engendered the next generation of oppressive patriarchy. You're welcome. Give it up your host, Imani. Give it up again for Nancy.